Hey, welcome to the shop. So I'm going to show you a video today about how to replace a single head bolt with a head stud. There's a lot of videos out there that will show you how to tear down to that point and how to reassemble after you finish the job. But I have, in all the videos I've reviewed, and I've reviewed a bunch of them, there's some, some basic mistakes that are made and things to watch for uh, that I want to share with you. I bought my studs from uh, ARP and I called and talked with their technical support people and have learned some things from them that are actually in contradiction to the instructions that help you to install the head stud better. Right now I'm about halfway through the process on this 05 uh, Cummins that I have, 5.9 liter. love this truck. And so I've, I've got a technique down and uh, I want to share some of that with you. So we're going to we're going to do one bolt, head bolt, and replace it with a head stud so that you can see the process. It's exactly the same on every other one as you follow through the sequence. So, uh, so here we go. I want to show you how I've, how I've laid these studs out. These are the bolts that I've already pulled uh, from the engine and have replaced them with studs. These are the studs that I still have left to go. And here's kind of the first tip that I have for you. So I haven't seen this done anywhere, uh, and the guys at ARP didn't mention this, but as I started doing this, I wanted to be more efficient and clean in the way I did things, so I pre-assembled these bolts. And let me tell you a little bit about the washer. Uh, on the instructions, uh, ARP says that you're supposed to lube both sides of this washer, but that is not the instruction from ARP now. And so if you, what you do is you leave the bottom of the washer clean. Clean it with acetone is what I did. And then you lube the top of the washer and the bottom of the, of the nut. And you lube the threads uh, up here. Then when you go to torque this down, what happens is um, you also clean the face on the top of the head that the washer is going to rest on. I clean it with acetone and I'll show you that process. Then when you torque this down, this nut as it it's going to spin on the washer rather than having the washer spin on the top of the head. And uh, Martin at ARP, he described to me why that's better and I'm, I frankly, I he lost me in the process but it was good enough for me to know that I needed to try to make sure that that washer did not spin. So that'll help us get a better torque. And so rather than, rather than, um, I see guys, they'll first they'll just take the stud and they'll drop it in the head and they'll screw it in by hand and they got grease everywhere, including on top of the cylinder head. And then they would go and uh, put the washer on and they would grease the threads and put the nut on. And all that time you're bending over the engine, number one. Number two is that you have the potential of dropping a washer somewhere in the motor or a nut. Uh, and you don't have the quality control and preciseness over how much grease you're putting on the threads and all that. So my advice to you, and this has worked just awesome, is to first clean the washers completely because they come with oil on them. Wash them in acetone. And then you take a washer and you uh, lube one side of it and you put it on from the top of the stud down because because you don't want any of the grease that you've put on the washer as you're pushing it up from the bottom to wipe along uh, the stud here and then end up getting onto the head somehow. So you drop it down from the top uh, to this position here I found works really great and then I go back and I did that for all of them first installed the washers and then it came back and I put lube on all the threads one at a time and laid them out again and then uh, lubed the bottom of every nut and then installed the nut and I've installed the nut down to where uh, it's flush with the top of the stud and I'll show you how that works as you install and then once I had them all laid out here then I took this oil can and uh, Martin at ARP suggested to go ahead and, and uh, oil the threads don't waste your good ARP lube that you're using up top on the threads of the stud. All it needs is a little is a little oil, and they don't call that out in the instructions either. 
Martin says they're going to change them uh, after we had our phone call. We'll see what happens there. And so I've laid it out on cardboard, so I just drip it along there and I let it sit in. It sets in the threads and soaks into the card cardboard and, and all is good. So that's the prep of the stud before we even go. Now the one other thing I'll mention to you is organization-wise, all of these are the short studs. There's 20 of them. And up here in a different area, I put the longer studs that go along the exhaust manifold side. And there's six of them. Because I see in videos people goof up and they end up accidentally installing one of the longer ones in the wrong spot. So for me that helped just to get them separated into a separate area. Then I come to the torque sequence chart. And here you can see that I've where my progress is so far. I do a, a red X on each one as I go through. Um, it helps me to keep track on the on the chart. Take your time, uh, and then we're going to talk about. Let's talk about this torque uh, sequence at the top. You can see the values there. Now I talked with Martin, and uh, Martin said, "Okay, even though I'm not removing the head, and most of us that are doing this are not, it appears." And so I talked to him about that, and and he said, "Since you're not removing the head." then you're not going to be able to get the reamer that they that they suggest down in to clean the threads and so he had a couple of options there I thought about taking the and the reamer by the way is different than a normal tap it's a few thousand smaller than the M12 uh, by 1.75 tap it's a few thousand smaller and it's designed not to remove metal in the block but simply to chip off any rust or carbonized crud that's in there if needed so since the head's still on the motor then the tap can't uh, or the uh, the reamer won't reach it and so one option would be to weld a rod on the top of a reamer and put it down in there the other would be to take an old bolt uh, that's long enough and he suggested uh, carving a vertical flute in it with a with a die grinder and a, and a, you know a metal cutting blade on that die grinder and you would cut you would cut up this thread about an inch just a line like that so that there was a place for the crud to go as you as you uh, reamed out the hole down below so there's some things about that now on our torque values they call for 40, 80, and 125. And normally this is when you've removed the head and you go through and do that. But since we're not doing that, uh, uh, Martin said what you still need to do is you remove the head bolt, then you put the stud in, and you still torque to 40, and you wait a minute or two. And then you torque it to 80, and wait another minute or two. It allows the bolt to stretch and to seat properly and then you torque to 125 and you're done. He said it's important to do for letting the bolt stretch and so that you allow the um, so that you it's a friction thing. Don't do it in five sequences, don't do it at different uh, torque uh, values. They've tested and experimented with it and this one is the best balance between a stretch on the bolt, a lack of friction on the threads and the nut and against the washer um, and the best chance to end up with an accurate torque uh, on your on your head stud. So now let's jump over to the motor here. I'll show you what I've got so far. I think I'm going to put a little more light on it for the video. But you can see that I've done some of the some of the head studs already. Um, so this one's done here, and this one, and this one. We're going to do this one next, right here, this, this head bolt that's still in here. Um, one thing that I got a little distressed about as I started to do this was you see the thread height that's sticking out there and how it's different from this thread height here. That one, there's less threads, which means that stud is deeper. So I worried when I first started that this stud wasn't deep enough. But I found that now as you look down this row of studs, these are the longer studs actually that are along the exhaust side, you'll see that their heights are consistent. They're the tallest ones sticking out of the nut. And then as you look down this row of studs, you'll see that their height is not quite as tall. 
and then as you look down this row it's even less height and on the final row it's even less height as you look down so that's a way I think that's that's what's happening here and so if when you're installing a stud you might be in here and all of a sudden you got a ton of height on a stud then you might need to remove crud uh, and get your and get your threads down deeper but if you're kind of following this sequence then so far I haven't had a need to go and do the reaming or to feel like it needed to be done I've seen people do videos where these these studs here are sticking out even higher than this one is so I know that those guys have not gotten that stud as deep as it should be so anyway I hope that helps you guys out alright we're gonna go through the process with uh, with this little guy right here and so here we go I told you we we're gonna do this one but next in sequence is actually this one so we're gonna pull this pull this uh, head bolt so the first thing is to get you a save your back get you a breaker bar right um, half inch drive break that guy loose once he's broken he comes out super easy now some of these bolts I've noticed apparently go through oil galleys and some come out really dry and clean and others are just totally soaked with oil and that freaked me out at first but I think that's probably what's happened and this one is really clean there's only this much from my fingernail down I can see that extends into the block that's all the threads that go in more threads go in with the stud and that's the problem is or could be the problem because this bolt only went in you know that far but there's more threads below and if they've gotten credit up then the stud the stud won't be able to get in deeper so I pull him out then I got this this is just a regular air chuck with an adapter in it and then I go into a little 3 16 diameter fuel line and the idea is to blow that hole out so I put him down in there and in case any crud comes out I don't want it to be all over inside the head so I'll put a rag around it and as I pull the hose out I wipe it on the rag so it stays clean and there's nothing I've never gotten anything out of these then I wipe this hole off with my oily rag this face of the head right so we get all the worst of the oil off and then I take a can of acetone and I get a cleaner rag and I find a clean spot on it put the acetone on there and then we clean that surface because we don't want that washer to spin on that surface so now we'll have a clean washer against a clean face and I always remember to think to myself is this an internal stud that's a shorter one or is it one along the exhaust manifold that requires a longer bolt I grab it like this so my washers up here clean on the bottom start it into the hole get it to here I switch my fingers so that I'm gonna let that washer drop I got a clean washer against a clean face and then I let the bolt slide in and that's as far as it'll go before it starts uh, into the threads out here is I'll use a uh, this guy to just save me time feed super easy there we go so just gently he's at the bottom now when you get when you get back farther under that cowl on those ones you won't be able to get uh, that wrench in there and so what I have is a is a shorty um, five millimeter allen wrench and so for those in the back I'll just use this shorty allen wrench back there under the cowl and turn them down so you never have to touch the nut and turn it you never have to touch the stud and get oil anywhere you just turn it in using this allen wrench at the top now out here once I have it at this position I've got a t-handle and I, I like the t-handles since I have room for it it's too tall for under the cowling too so I bottom the stud I test it I can feel it 
gradually wedging in, which tells me that's probably a thread wedging in rather than crud, right? And I can tell from experience how far this has gone down since all my nuts are at the same height to the stud. Then I can see about how high I am, and that's right where it should be. It's where the others have been. And so I get it bottomed, and uh, Martin at ARP says back it out one-eighth turn. Now I worry with other videos because I'll people see people back them out, and then they'll just go and they'll, and they'll put their torque wrench on and they'll start torquing that. Well, that stud's going to turn right back in. And so what I do is I, I like the T-handle because I can see my orientation for it. And so while I hold that T-handle with my hands, I put that. So here's the bottom. There's an eighth out. I turn my nut down as far as I can with my hands. Then I take a 14 millimeter wrench and I pull this guy out, drop the wrench over it, put this guy right back on. I'm holding my position still and I snug that nut at the bottom. And I found that just with my torque values and stuff, I, I put it, I crank it a little bit. I probably put 20 foot pounds on there but this guy has not wanted to move at all and now I'm confident that that stud is going to stay off the floor of the hole. So once I've got him there, I'm ready to do my first torque. So I got 40, I got 40 foot pounds for our first torque. And in the torquing, in the torquing, um, standard practice, but Martin re-emphasized, you want your strokes on the torquing to be um, slow and smooth. You don't want to jerk it, you don't want to pull it hard. So we're going to go slow and smooth until we hear it click. There we go. So there's our first torque to 40 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to wait a minute or two for that, for that stud to stretch a little bit, um, for every, whatever it does in there that he was saying. In the meantime, I'm going to get my other torque wrench ready for 80 foot-pounds. I found I had to go and get some different size extensions for this half inch drive based on where I was. You want to be as low as you can be, but sometimes you just can't be low, and so the extensions really come in handy as something you might want to prepare with. Okay, we've probably been a minute or so. So we're at 80 foot pounds, and here we go with our torque. Slow, steady pulls. You can't see it, but sometimes that nut still turns. I mean, the there was our there was our torque value at 80 foot pounds. So I've noticed that sometimes that washer still turns for a while, and then it will stop, and then we'll get what we want, and that is the nut sliding against the top of the washer, and the washer being stationary against the head. So there's our. There's our uh, 80, 80 foot pound torque. And so I'll get ready for our 125. Okay, we're ready for our we're ready for our 125. Got it set. Here we go. And there we go. And we're ready to move on to the next bolt in the sequence. Hey, so there you have it. I hope you found it to be helpful. A couple other things real quick. One is being a detailed nut like I am on all the research that I've done. Then I've, uh, I've documented instructions on how to do all this. I'm really happy to email you guys any of this. At the end of the video, you'll see my email address on the screen. Uh, GP wrinkled at hotmail.com. GP's for Greg Porter and wrinkled because I'm old and wrinkled. Uh, so uh, if you email me, I'll send you these instructions. Uh, as I might have mentioned, I don't know if I did, I've got fuel injectors coming from a dynamite diesel. They're 15% over. There'll be 50 horsepower uh, improvement. And uh, maybe I'll pick up a mile or two per gallon in mileage. So they look like a really good balance. They're, they're a polished 
orifice and they're a match set. They're like $3,000 and so uh, they should be here in a couple of days and I'll be tearing out the intake manifold side uh, before I reassemble everything. But I've also got instructions for all of, all of that here as well and this contains all the disassembly uh, for everything both on the fuel injector side and for um, our head stud and it'll talk about valve adjustments as well. So you're welcome to it. If you shoot me an email, I'll send it to you. Uh, I hope you found this to be beneficial. You know, you and I, we've all we've spent some serious money on head studs. My kit was, I think, $400. And uh, we want to be sure that those are in there correctly. We've done it so we don't blow a head gasket. And so as we, I think, follow some of these steps and make sure we pay attention to the details, then we'll get the maximum benefit we can out of these head studs. So... Uh, safe driving to you, and I hope your uh, engine build goes well. And uh, shoot me a line if you got a question, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.